welcome to day 9 of 100 days of Kubernetes. The challenge where I am to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. For those who are new to my channel, welcome, it's really great to have you here. I'm basically sharing my entire learning journey across the DevOps space. So this is related to Kubernetes. If you're interested in other DevOps related content, subscribe to my channel or to my weekly newsletter where I share free learning resources. Now today I'm going to be looking at services. If you've looked at any of my previous videos, you might have seen that I already talked once about services. However, that was from a highly theoretical perspective of me just doing some nice or rather practical drawings. <laughs> so today I'm going to be looking at how you can set up a service in your pod. If you're watching for the first time, this is the book yep, that I'm currently following. So if you're looking for a great book about Kubernetes, check that one out. Otherwise, I'm just resharing content related to the book, from the book, as well as from other places. So let's get started. Now, this is the GitHub repo repository <laughs> that I'm cloning, that I cloned. Um, and then I'm basically walking through some of the commands that I described within the book. And so first of all, we want to CD into the repository that we um, cloned. So we're just going to do that. As you can see, we are on a master branch here. Now, just checking at this point, if you want to follow along what I'm doing here, you have a local Kubernetes cluster set up either for micro -cates or mini cube or something similar. You can check that through uh, cuddle config current context. So in this case, it tells me, hey, you're connected to micro -cates. Now at the beginning, we're going to set up our service um, the imperative way, meaning we tell the cluster what to do versus giving it a definition and the cluster just X upon it. So in this case, this is the definition that we're going to use first. Um, as you can see here, those are maybe information you all feel really familiar with. This is just standard um, Kubernetes YAML. Here we have the metadata of the oh, service that we're going to set up. Here we specify the number of replicas. Uh, check out the video from yesterday on replica sets on that. And then we have here the selectors and the template, the specs. The specs have our containers. In this case, we have two containers. First of all, our Mongo, MongoDB container and then the specific container here uh, from the author of the book. Now here it specifies the container port in this case. The protocol is TCP. The other option would be UDP. Um, in that case, we would have to specify it. TCP is by default that's going to be used. Let's create it. And we're going to do it through kubectl create and then the name of the resource. created. So let's look for kubectl get services. And we have here um, the service that we just set up. It's of type cluster IP. You could have, um, I didn't go into too much detail on that. You can have instead of cluster IP, you can have also node port. More on that in a second. And load balancer. Load balancer is actually only really useful if you use it in combination with your cloud cluster and then you would use the load balancer provided from your cloud cluster. To specify the entire service, we can use this command, you kind of get and then the service. Um, and here it tells us basically this is the name of our service, like specified in the YAML. Here are the desired number of um, pods that we want and that basically specifies our replica set. Then here the current that we have and the ones that are ready where the containers are and the pods are spin up within the node. Um, so as you can see, it's all ready. We can also look for kubectl, get pods. And then we have here our two pods, as you can see here, and follows the same naming convention of our resource. Next, we want to access the resources of our cluster. And for that, we have to expose the, the port basically of, of the cluster to make it accessible from the outside. With cluster IP, the, um, the IP is only accessible within our cluster, like the, the pods, the resources are only accessible within our cluster. Now only the containers within the pods uh, can communicate over localhost. 
So outsiders can't communicate with the cluster IP. However, if we change it to, um, if we change our cluster IP to node port, then we can access it from outside. And that's what we're doing here with kubectl expose and then the resource that we want to expose and the, the name of it and the target port. This is basically the port that MongoDB is listening to. Let's delete that comment. That's my comment to know what's happening here. And once deleted, we can run this command. And now it tells us the service is exposed. Now let's take a look at our newly created resource. If you look at it, kubectl describe, and then the name of the resource. I have here the name, the namespace. In this case, we are still on the default namespace um, of our cluster. If you are in a production environment, you would not necessarily want to deploy any resource in the default namespace, but on specific namespaces. We are on type node port. Now the node port makes our um, resources within the cluster accessible from the outside. Then this is our IP of the cluster. This is our target port of the cluster. Um, we didn't set the port. That's why the target port on the port is the same right now. And uh, so we have the target port. All the parts within the cluster have access to the target port. And additionally, here we have our specific endpoints for our nodes. So <laughs> if we now take there, for example, this one, and we go ahead and we open it up, we can see here that this is our um, MongoDB database that we set up within our cluster. So we can access it actually. But let's assume that this is our Kubernetes cluster again. And we tell our Kubernetes cluster to kubectl that it should create a new service. So we communicate with the API server within our master node. It should create a new service. So this is step one. Now step two, we have an endpoint end point controller within our master node in our cluster. And that uh, endpoint controller is basically watching our API server. It's watching it, this is an I. Um, and and tries to identify basically tries to see whenever we want to create a new service so once we tell it to create a new service the endpoint controller will realize oh a new service has to be created and go ahead and create a new service so this will create a new service service one let's say now remember that we have within our worker nodes we have the cube proxy cube proxy and the cube proxy is responsible for managing the access to that to the pods within this node um, so once it sees oh there's a new service created it will basically configure its ip table to have an entry to the ip address of the service and configure it so that the pods that are running within this node have then access are communicating with the service and the service is communicating with those. It's then able to communicate with those pods within our node. And lastly, we have our cube, cube DNS that's also somewhere in the cluster, I assume within the master node. I'm not 100% sure, <laughs> but it's basically responsible to then make a new entry in our database within the cluster to say like, hey, this service exists and this is up and running and configured. So now this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also, if you made it this far from the video, it must be that you're serious about learning Kubernetes. So you might want to join our DevOps learning group. If you do, just message me on Twitter, link below, and I can add you. I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.